I was going to film this video outside based on the topic, but nah, this is the UK. Anyway, over the last few weeks, I've been wearing the Garmin Epix Pro. And as always, this kind of thing has taught me loads about the Apple Watch Ultra. Earlier this year, I swapped my beloved Apple Watch Ultra for a Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro, and I was amazed. The main thing was the 18 days of battery life and the round face, and, well, everything about Garmin screams you can do anything with this. Whereas when it comes to the Apple Watch Ultra, everything about the marketing campaign says you can do anything with this, and then when you get it, you realize that it's just a, it's just a very, very nice, Apple Watch. I still maintain, if you're the sort of person who runs for days and days or hours and whatever, if you run a lot or if you hike for months and years or whatever, if you do stuff that I don't do, basically, you won't buy one of these. You'll buy a Garmin. So <laughs> that's the end of this video, isn't it? No, it's not the end of this video because Garmin got in touch again and said, do you fancy checking out the Epix Pro? The Epix Pro is basically a Phoenix 7 Pro with a better display. Now the Garmin people watching this video will be furiously typing a comment below or they've left already but I don't care and that's because this video is made by an Apple Watch Ultra user so I'm looking at the Epix Pro as someone who wears this normally. This isn't an Epix Pro review there's loads of those out there already this is just five things that I think this can learn from this. Okay, onto the specs of the Epix Pro. This might take a while. It has 42, 47, and 51 millimeter versions, and Garmin sent me the 47 millimeter version, which for my wrist is perfect. As I mentioned earlier, it has an AMOLED display, which is quite a big upgrade from the Phoenix 7 Pro. That is the one thing about that watch that did disappoint me slightly because it's nowhere near as good as the Apple Watch Ultra. This one still isn't as bright as the Apple Watch Ultra. It's not as high resolution. I think for this type of watch, balancing the battery life and the display quality, I think it's the best you're going to get. And talking of battery life, you get 16 days with the always on display turned off. With it turned on, you get six days. And if you turn the battery saver mode on, you get 21 days. So even the least amount of battery life that you get from this thing is still about three days more than you get from the Apple Watch Ultra. I'll come on to that in a bit. It's made from titanium, fiber reinforced polymer and sapphire crystal. And I think it's got that classic Garmin rugged beauty, which I am a massive fan of. It weighs 70 grams, so it's refreshingly light. This looks like a heavy watch, but it really, really isn't. It's got 32 gig of built-in memory if you want to upload your music and more sensors than I have time to list. Honestly, if I went through every single sensor on this watch, you'd be gone. It's got a very bright LED flashlight, 10 ATM water resistance, which is effectively 100 meters, multi-band GPS and built-in mapping. It's got loads of training stuff built into it as well, so sleep score and insights, training readiness, training status, daily suggested workouts. Basically, whenever I wake up and look at this watch, it gives me all of that data from the night, and also it gives, gives me an idea of what I should be doing today. I normally ignore it and just do my own thing, but it's nice to know that if I was really into my fitness and you know really took account of every single metric and data point, this thing has me covered. Let's get on to the five things I think this watch teaches this watch. Number one is that sport watches are clearly a category in their own right. The list of things this can track is ridiculous. So you have the normal stuff like you know, running, gym work, swimming, all that sort of stuff, but also boating, golfing. I know a lot of golfers rely on their Garmin's, motorsports, and even gaming. Also, and I've said this before, the data that you get in the Garmin Connect app is absolutely bonkers. I don't understand any of this stuff. But again, a bit like the sleep insights and the training readiness and all that sort of stuff, it's nice to know it has this. And again, it just reveals how far away this is from this when it comes to serious sports. Now, this isn't a bad thing for the Apple Watch Ultra, but it does mean that you have to be very careful about how literally you take Apple's marketing campaign for this, because if you watch their ads for the Apple Watch Ultra, it's people running through deserts, it's people calling base camp from tents in the wilderness and all that sort of stuff. This thing is built for that because it is built like a tank, but it's not really made for it. And that's the key thing here. When you start using something like the Epix Pro, you realize 
realise that this sits in a very different category to this. Oh, and if you're wondering, this is the Apple Watch Ultra 1. It's not the 2, but that doesn't matter. The reason it doesn't matter is because there haven't been any meaningful updates to the battery life on the Apple Watch Ultra 2 versus the Apple Watch Ultra 1. And that's where the next big lesson for this watch comes in from the Epix Pro. Now this doesn't have the 18 days of battery life that you get on the Phoenix 7 Pro, but you can get at least six days out of it. And in my experience, that's about double what you can get out of this, and that is really pushing it. In my experience, it's basically a two-day watch. It's just a bit better than the Series 9. And now that I've used two Garmin watches, the battery life is always the thing that amazes me the most. And no, you do not forget to charge them. That is one thing I was worried about. With, with such a long battery duration, I thought maybe you just forget to, to plug it in, but you don't. You just enjoy the fact it spends longer away from the charger. And given the choice between the Phoenix 7 Pro and the Epix Pro, I would pick the Epix Pro because the balance between battery life, which is still very, very good, and a better display works for me. I know I'm very boring about the battery life on the Apple Watch Ultra, but I don't care. Apple needs to do better if this thing is going to live up to those adverts. Number three on my list of things that are going to really annoy Apple Watch Ultra fans is the fact that round watch faces like this one on the Epix Pro are better. This year, every time I've returned to the square Apple Watch Ultra face, I've just thought, <sighs> Come to think of it, I don't think I've ever liked the Apple Watch face because all of my previous watches have been round. Just looks better on the wrist. I think it works better in terms of complications and the stuff that you want to see on the display. Funnily enough, I think the last square watch I had before the Apple Watch was ironically in the 80s. And yes, I'm showing my age there, but if you remember it, it was the Casio calculator keyboard, which was admittedly really cool. We're never gonna see a round Apple Apple Watch. Number four on my list of things that you probably definitely don't agree with is the fact that, well, it's a positive lesson for the Apple Watch Ultra. It's something this thing does right. And that is the fact that I think it's priced correctly. In the UK, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 retails for £799. The Epix Pro, the version that I have, the 47 millimeter edition, is 930 quid. But there's three sizes. So the most expensive is £999 and the least expensive is 829 quid. I've always thought that one of the greatest strengths of the Apple Watch Ultra is the price. When we first started hearing rumors about this rugged Apple Watch, this kind of adventurer-focused premium version of Apple's wearable, I was convinced it was going to be well beyond 1,000 quid. But it's considerably below that, and I think it's affordable for people who don't want a Garmin, who want an Apple Watch with all of the ecosystem stuff built into it. Now, that's not to say that the Epix Pro is overpriced. In fact, I think this is priced perfectly as well. Okay, number five is a bit of a surprise. The Apple ecosystem, for me, is one of the biggest selling points of most of Apple's products. The reason I'm welded to the Mac and to the iPhone and to the iPad is because they all tie together perfectly. So whether it's the fact that I can copy and paste content from one device to the other, or my AirPods Pro seamlessly, these days, switch between each of those devices, or the fact that iCloud just has all of my stuff in the right place at the right time, it makes the entire thing massively reliable. The weird thing is, is that I don't seem to have the same level of attachment to the Apple Watch Ultra. I think the only ecosystem benefits that I get from this are Apple Pay, although I can have Garmin Pay on this. I guess the ability to unlock my Macs with the Apple Watch, but I have Touch ID in most instances. And... What else? Oh, the fact that my AirPods can connect to this while I go out on a run. Um, oh, and the fact that on Fitness Plus, if you don't have an Apple Watch Ultra when you start one of those workouts, you do feel a bit left out. If I leave the house without a Mac or without my iPhone, I do feel a little bit like one of my limbs is missing. I don't feel like that when I'm wearing the Epix Pro. And for me, that means that Apple clearly needs to up its game with the ecosystem when it comes to the Apple Watch. Of all the platform switching I've done this year, so I've done loads of Android stuff, I've done Windows stuff, it's the Garmin experiments that have been the most compelling. And while I can't switch full-time to an Android phone, and I definitely can't switch to Windows, I am considering going full-time with Garmin. But because I'm such a sheeple, such an Apple fanboy, I still can't, I still can't quite drop this yet. But in 2024, I am going to dig more into the Garmin side of things. 
things, I promise. But I'd love to know, are you a Garmin person or an Apple Watch person? Let me know why down below. And if you've still got some time and you fancy some more Apple Watch Ultra content, keep watching for a link to a video I made a little while ago where I took this on a hike.